Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back with an update on the Zapper Box. This is an ATSC 3 over-the-air TV tuner, and I've got it running upstairs right now. And when we last looked at this, it did not support encrypted ATSC 3 channels, which it now supports. It also didn't yet have its DVR functionality working, but now it is functional, and that DVR can record and play back encrypted channels. So we're going to take a look at those new features in this video, and you can refer to my other one for the review of the ZapperBox platform as a whole. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that ZapperBox has a loaner unit that's been kind of permanently living here as they go through all of the uh, changes to their platform here. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. They are not providing any additional compensation, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see how the Zapper Box is evolving. Now, the Zapper Box still costs $275 for the dual tuner unit. Additionally, they have a subscription plan for the channel guide that costs $30 a year. I found the subscription that they're offering for the channel guide to be necessary for DVR recordings, and it's not all that expensive, all things considered. Now, what I'm browsing through right now is my channel guide. I've filtered in only the ATSC3 channels. So I'm going to go from one uh, encrypted channel to another. So let's go over to WFSB, which is also encrypted. And when I make the switch there, you can see it's not all that quick in switching, especially to an encrypted channel. This is because the Zapper Box requires an internet connection for it to work with these encrypted channels. It's still crazy in my mind that you have an antenna on your roof and you can't watch TV on it unless your device is connected to the internet. But that is the reality the broadcasters have put in place here. But I found things do spin up relatively quickly. I have found on occasion that it stutters a bit and the video looks a little more compressed than it should. Uh, but usually it catches up and it starts working without issue. The interface itself feels a little faster since the first version that I looked at. And when you are looking at unencrypted channels, it does tend to spin up a little quicker. You can, of course, pause live TV, and if you have a, an SD card installed, it will give you the ability to pause for longer lengths of time than you can without it. A minimum SD card requirement here for recording is 128 gigabytes. It doesn't have to be a very robust card, but you do need that minimum amount of capacity to be able to do the DVR recordings. Let's dive into the DVR feature now and see how all of that works. Now, since its release, the Zapper Boxes had a DVR button. Initially, that button didn't do anything, but now when you push it, you actually get a menu of things that you have recorded. And some of this stuff I recorded earlier off of encrypted channels, like the Eyewitness News at 11 here, along with the NBC Connecticut News. And if I go ahead and select the NBC recording here, I can see when that was recorded and how big it is on the card. And then if I push the button here again, I can resume it from where I last was viewing it, which I'll do here, or I can start from the beginning. So it does have the ability to do some bookmarking. As you can see, there is a bit of a delay in things coming up. Again, this is due to the encryption. It does have to go back out to the internet to get an encryption key to watch the recording, which adds some delay to the mix. But the recordings here do seem to work. There is a 30 second skip option here. It's not immediate. It does take it a little bit of time to think about it. And then I can also go back here 10 seconds. So it's got some of those features you're used to on a regular DVR system, which is nice. I'm going to go back onto the DVR menu here and show you some other features that it has. If you go over to schedule, you can see everything that it is scheduled to record. And I'll show you how to set up recordings in a minute. You can also see what series you have recorded on here so you can more quickly jump to things. So for example, I had it recording every episode of Chicago Fire, but unfortunately when I select Chicago Fire here and push the button, nothing happens. I can delete it off of this screen, but I can't actually navigate to the episodes of the show. So that might be a little bug that they have to correct with an update. My box actually got two updates in the last 24 hours. So I think they're constantly adjusting and fixing things. And this might be an area that needs to get fixed. Now they also have the ability to set up a manual record. So if you're not paying for the subscription, this is gonna be how you will have to record things because without the subscription, you don't get the channel guide data to really flesh out the DVR functionality. When you go down to the history here, you can see what it has recorded. 
and what the status of that recording was. So for example, this was something I recorded midstream and it says it was a partial. This is one that I canceled, but the other ones here, as you can see, were successful. And I also cannot select the episode from this history list. I can only just view it. So to actually watch stuff, it looks like we have to go to the library uh, and select those particular recordings to view. Now to set up recordings, it works largely like you would expect. So I can do it here from the channel guide. Let me get you a better view here. And speaking of views, I could say, you know what? I want to record every episode of the view here. So I could say record all episodes and then I can go to record here to set it up. It doesn't yet have the ability to differentiate between reruns and new episodes, so I haven't been able to get this record new episodes option to present itself. So hopefully that will uh, get updated and fixed in the near future. But you do have the ability to pad the start and the stop. So if you have a show that you may want to record three minutes earlier than its start time, you can set that up here. And when I set the record now, you'll see two little dots next to the view. And then because I have a two tuner unit here, I could also tell it to record all of the episodes of The Price is Right. So I can click record there and I'll be able to record both of these things. But if I also wanted to record the news, we have a conflict. So what happens when I try to set a recording for that and go to record is that I will get a notice that it's not possible because I only have a two tuner unit and it will ask me to resolve the conflict by choosing one over the other. What's not clear is what happens if a conflict is discovered later. I don't think it's going to pop something up for you. So you'll have to go into that schedule menu and look in there to see what the priority is. My guess as to how it works is that it will set the priority automatically based on which one was in there first. And with only two tuners, you do have to be a little judicious about how this all works. Now, another thing that we can do is actually record something that's in progress here. So let me back out of uh, this screen and let's go to the Fox 61 morning news here. And what I'm going to do is hit the record button and you can see it's buffering a little bit there. And what will happen here is it will just start recording. And while this is recording, I can go back to the guide now because I have a two tuner unit and watch what's going on with my ABC affiliate. So this will continue to record in the background. And now we're going to go over to my ABC affiliate and watch this live. So you can watch one thing and record the other or record two things at the same time. But if you are using both tuners, you can't do a third thing. Now, one of the features that they will be adding soon to the mix is having the zapper boxes recognize other zapper boxes on the network. So if you have two, two tuner boxes in two rooms, the zapper box will coordinate recordings so you can record a total of four things at the same time. So that's going to do it for this look at new zapper box features. I'm very pleased with the progress they're making on this box. And I believe this is the only ATSC3 box that can record two encrypted channels at the same time. The problem is, is that it lives on the box and the box only. So if you have multiple TVs in the house, there's no way to get the content from an encrypted channel off of your zapper box and onto a Roku or something in another room. That's called a gateway uh, scenario. And that's something the broadcasters have essentially not yet allowed with their new encryption plan, even though they claim they will be supporting it in the future. Now, I do want to give Zapperbox a lot of credit here. They have a very detailed release notes page on their support site. And what's great about what they're doing here is they are providing an immense level of detail. They're being very transparent about what features they are adding and which ones are coming a little later. And they have largely delivered on their promises, including this big DVR update. So what you'll see here is uh, some new things that are coming down the pike. They are going to have some new DVR features. Probably some of the things that I pointed out that weren't working a minute ago will probably get fixed uh, by the end of next month, early June. Uh, they will have a content security update that will allow you to watch encrypted content without an active internet connection. So that will be a nice welcome change and we'll certainly put that to the test. They also are coming up with the multi-room DVR whole home gateway update, which will be out in the summer with their 3.0 release, but it will not support encrypted programming. 
and that is because the broadcasters are dragging their feet on getting this gateway specification out to manufacturers. They claim they're going to be able to do it at some point, but until it happens, I'm not holding my breath, and I'm not blaming Zapperbox here. This is all on the broadcasters who really don't want you having convenience in your home with free over-the-air content. They want you paying to have that stuff streamed from a streaming provider. So we'll see if they're able to deliver on that. They claim they will be, so we'll see what happens. Of note, though, that uh, this feature, the encrypted playback, will likely require an Android device because the broadcasters have not yet released any way to watch encrypted content on a Roku, on a Fire TV, on an Apple TV, or anything else that's not running Android because Google actually runs the encryption <laughs> side of things for the broadcasters. So this is still a mess, and it's not Zapperbox's fault, but this is the reality we're living in here. We've had these gateway devices for well over a decade now on the existing TV standard, and right now they just don't work on the new one. And you can see some of the revision history here. So all in, uh, I am very happy to recommend this for folks that are looking for something that can do what you just saw, uh, but I'm still very unhappy with the progress the broadcasters are making in getting us back the functionality we've had for decades now. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.